first Okay, so this is McPella that you see right here. I'm wanting to get it into the moth side before it closes. So we'll go over to the moth side, then we'll come back. We'll do the teaching over here before we go on and do it. Inshallah, Habib. So they're making, these are Israeli soldiers. They're making sure that what country we're from and uh, that we're Christian. And, uh, yeah. You see the parapets that I was pointing out at yeah. Mamre, lining all along there? So it looks like it's a building that you're looking at, but it's not. It's, it's buildings inside of it now, but these are just walls. Just like just like at Mamre, the, we had the enclosure walls. These are just ancient enclosure walls that are preserved all the way to the top of the parapets. You see that? So imagine Mamre. Only at the center of Mamre was uh, Abraham's altar. At the center of this is a cave where the patriarchs are buried. Okay, and we're gonna talk about that when we get back around on this side. Yeah. And so this site today is divided in half. The side that we're going to now is a mosque. And the other side is a synagogue. So, ooh, look at that goat. He's eating the paper and all. Oh, uh, the baby goat. Maybe he should eat the bread. <laughs> so we need to pass a security check now. Yes. Thank you. He's going over here. I uh, know. They're going to give you a little thing that the women are going to have to put on a little Star Wars costume up here. Yeah. So. <laughs> the vast majority of people you're speaking Arabic to, right? It's yeah. Not, it's not Hebrew. You're not speaking no. Hebrew. No. I mean, you look like Jawas. <laughs> but you got to be careful around here because you don't want to speak Hebrew to Arabs and you don't want to speak Arabic to you, to Jews. Okay. It's a big no-no. <laughs> Yeah. You get your head bit off. And I don't think I would know. Just speak English. Okay, so, so come on in. And as we're walking here, I want you to look to your right at this Herodian wall. What does that remind you of? Yeah. This wall. Temple Mount. It reminds you, yes, of uh, the site in Jerusalem. Right. Yeah. So Harry built this. At the wall that faces a certain direction. Now we start getting into these slanted stones uh -huh. with these uh, parapets. It's a, it's a decoration that makes it look like it's lined with columns. Yeah. See that? Yeah. Uh -huh. So this is what Mamre looked like. Wow. So where did all the stones go for the walls of Mamre? Well, they, they were reused, obviously. They came in and were uh -huh. building something else somewhere else, and they took a bunch of them down to its foundation. Okay. the only ones walking. We better go away. Sandrella. You know Sandrella? I have to take our shoes off.
Yeah, we will when we For round the, the corner year. here. So what these walls surround, what these walls surround is a, a burial cave. Um, and so the patriarchs and matriarchs were buried in that cave. But uh, in the medieval period, they started doing uh, practice um, and, and called cenotaphs. Okay, so this is a cenotaph. And maybe some of you are familiar with them from Europe. But um, basically what they are is that it's not saying, this is the cenotaph of Sarah. It's not saying that Sarah is buried in that cenotaph, but it's there as a reminder that she's one of the ones buried in the cave below. Does that make sense? So it's like a memorial. We want to understand? Is it necessarily over her grave? No, no. They're all buried together. And yeah. And uh, we'll talk about that when we okay. go through the teaching. But um, it's just there so that people remember. And so you'll see the different cenotaphs um, around. <coughs> this is a prayer place. Yeah. So be nice and quiet. Now this is a mosque. in here. Now these are the cenotaphs of Isaac and Rebecca. <laughs> the front of the mosque, you see the prayer niche at the front of the mosque. You see where the imam would speak to the group. I think these numbers over here have to do with the Quran scriptures that are being read, maybe Michelle knows, I don't know. You know. These numbers, are they the scriptures? The prayer time. The, the prayer time. Yes. Oh, okay. Morning, evening, afternoon. Yeah. yeah. If you look up, Ooh, this wow. architecture is Ooh. Crusader. So at one point, this was a Crusader church that oh. is now a mosque. Oh. Okay. Okay, and then you follow me. So as you're coming around the corner, you can look at what I'm pointing at. You see me over here? Uh. It's, it, it, can you go get, hey, uh, can you get her another one? Say, Michelle, Michelle, can you get her another one? This one is not working. Like this, it's okay. Okay, so 
so by early explorers, this was explored. Okay, so we know kind of what the um, what's underneath here. They tell a story about, and they have pictures of a of a young girl that they very skinny young girl that they sent down this chute here, this cistern top, into the cave below. But there's no question that there is a cave uh, in the center of these uh, commemorative walls built by Herod the Great as one of three sites that were built up by him to honor his subjects, to please his subjects. Now, as you come up here, I want you to notice a few things. First of all, this is the cenotaph that you're going to see to Abraham. Then what I want you to notice is that there's a big shield next to it. And you'll see a window on the other side. That's the Jewish side. So the Jewish side, they're looking this way. And we're and the Muslim side is looking this way with a shield, uh, like a riot shield type thing in between so that rocks can't be thrown back and forth and whatnot. And then this is uh, the cenotaph of Abraham. This side, <clears throat> so right through that barrier that's been put up is the synagogue, synagogue and mosque, which is why this place has never been archaeologically excavated, because uh, there's just too much contention at a shared site. Everybody understand? Any questions or anything? Now we're going to exit, get our shoes back on, get rid of your costumes. The main reason I come over here is because I just want to eat. So again, the, the Palestinian city of Hebron is over here. And in order to get into this area, they have to come through a checkpoint. <clears throat> this is still part of the Palestinian Hebron that you see houses around, but uh, it's controlled by the Israeli military. So any military that you see in here, all of them are Israeli. Okay. 
way they can get to the mosque without going through here? No, they got to go through the checkpoint to oh. get to the mosque. up here and find the place that we can yeah, talk about this. On this side. Yeah. Go through the yeah. yeah. so come around where I am so that Michelle can talk to the uh, soldiers. Yeah. Casey, she's not here yet. Where is she's she? She's back there, I saw her. Yeah, you saw her? Okay. Okay, so good. This is the Shev I've never probably been here in the page 53 you get here welcome to the second holiest site in Judaism outside of the Temple Mount Jerusalem now we can say Temple Mount <laughs> over there yeah Isn't it interesting, though, how the Bible says that there's going to be all this contention between the descendants of Abraham, and now 4,000 years later, you show up, and guess what? There's contention between the children of Abraham. Okay, so um, page 53, let's talk about this site. Um, I called the chapter the Shepherd's Cave because... Everyone who is buried in this cave are shepherds. Um, so you see a picture of the building uh, where we're standing down there in the bottom of page 53. You see uh, the shepherd that I took a picture of that's actually um, right in this area, just a little bit uh, north of us here. Now, what I want you to see is page 54, 55, the spread up at the top there. Um, so that's Tel Hebron, which is right over here. You can't see it because of these buildings, but we're gonna go over there to get that perspective too after this. But look at where we are at Mechpella in regards to uh, the Tel, the city, the ancient city of Hebron. Now I'm gonna read on page 54, Genesis 23, two. Sarah lived to be 127 years old. She died at Kiryat Arba, that is Hebron in the land of Canaan. And Abraham went to mourn for Sarah and to weep over her. The next quote down. Abraham said to, the, uh, to them, the inhabitants of Hebron, If you are willing to let me bury my dead, then listen to me and intercede with Ephron, son of Zah Zohar, on my behalf, so he will sell me the cave of Machpelah. Okay, so uh, the next one down. So Ephron's field in Machpelah near Mamre both the field and the cave in it, and all the trees within the borders of the field was deeded to Abraham as his property. 
This is the first property that he obtained, really the only property that he obtained in his promise that his descendants would inherit the land. Um, deed, was deeded to Abraham as his property in the presence of all the Hittites who had come to the gate of the city. Afterward, Abraham buried his wife Sarah in the cave in the field of Machpelah near Mamre, which is at Hebron, in the land of Canaan. So the field and the cave in it were deeded to Abraham by the Hittites as a burial site. Okay, so we were just a little over a mile that way at Mamre, where the promise was given, and that's where Sarah laughed. And of course, that promise was fulfilled when uh, Sarah had Isaac, and, um, and so now we have Sarah, from whom that promise came through, buried here in this cave. Um, on page 55, uh, the quote there says, Abraham left everything he owned to Isaac. Abraham, <clears throat> Abraham lived 175 years. Then Abraham breathed his last and died at a good old age, an old man and full of years, and he was gathered to his people. His sons Isaac and Ishmael buried him in the cave of Machpelah near Mamre. And this is the contention that we still see 4,000 years later, are the descendants of Isaac and Ishmael. Um, in the field of Ephron, son of Zohar, the Hittite, the field Abraham had bought from the Hittites. There Abraham was buried with his wife Sarah. After Abraham's death, God blessed his son Isaac. Okay, next quote down. Jacob came home to his father Isaac in Mamre, near Kiriat Arba, that is Hebron, where Abraham and Isaac had stayed. Isaac lived 180 years. Then he breathed his last and died and was gathered to his people, old and full of years. And his sons Esau and Jacob buried him. So we got Abraham, Sarah, and now Isaac. So the one that was promised to be born over at Mamre was born and is buried here with his parents who were given the promise. Um, now, what does it mean? Um, we have this uh, thing, gathered to his people. Do you see that in that quote we just read? Then he breathed his last and died and was gathered to his people. And this is these two pictures are pictures of an Old Testament period tomb, which is how this cave would have been set up. <clears throat> what happens in an old, in a New Testament period tomb, we've looked at, they put them in the ossuaries, right? We're talking the wealthy people, of course. In the Old Testament period, they did it totally differently. They had these, what are called repositories that you see pictures of in, in here, this, this hollowed out area, a portion of the cave for the bones. And when you died, then you uh, were laid out on these burial benches. You turned to bones after about a year, and then they would throw you in these repositories. And then when uh, the next generation died, they would take the bones uh, and throw it onto the bones of your forefathers. And then the next generation onto the bones of their ancestors. And that's the term being gathered to your ancestors or being gathered to your forefathers or to your people. That's what it's referring to. It's a big pile of bones and your bones are literally thrown on the bones of your fathers and grandfathers and great grandfathers. Okay, now you see the red line in, in the page on uh, page 57. You see that red line going across the top of where the parapets are. That's, that's Herodian preserved all the way to there. That's amazing. That, that you don't see at the Temple Mount even, and certainly not at Mamre. And if I just take a picture of the wall there, you can't tell if it's the Western Wall in Jerusalem or, or the Western Wall at, uh, at Mechpella. <coughs> okay. Um, Jacob. Yeah. Okay, and, and now the patriarchs have gone down to, with Jacob, they've gone down to Egypt through the story of Joseph, right? And down there, Jacob is getting ready to die. And one of the last things that he does is he blesses his sons down in Egypt. And the first, his firstborn son is Reuben. Doesn't get a very good blessing because of uh, he defiled his father's bed. Um, then Simeon and Levi, 
and uh, they don't get a very good blessing because of the violence that they took out on the uh, men of Shechem, and we'll be at Shechem. Uh, so it falls, really the great blessing falls to Judah. And right now you're standing in the heart of the territory of Judah. Originally, Jerusalem was not part of Judah. It uh, became part of Judah when David, who was from Judah, captured it and made it the capital of all Israel. Before that, uh, he, he ruled here from Hebron uh, as the king for seven and a half years. So this is the heart of Judah and Hebron, its capital, okay? And so this is the blessing of, that Jacob gave to Judah. He says this in Genesis 49, 10, the scepter will not depart from Judah, nor the ruler's staff from between his feet, until he to whom it belongs shall come, and the obedience of the nations shall be his. Mm. Pretty intense blessing to a shepherd, yeah. from a shepherd. Okay, now, now the Bible gives us pictures here, and I want you to turn the page. What is a scepter a picture of? So I put some scepters in here for you to see, right? So a scepter is symbolic of a king's authority. So uh, this is Tutankhamun's King Tut's scepter up here. This is an Assyrian king holding a scepter. How do you know he's a king? Because the one holding the scepter is the king. And uh, here you have a scepter and, and an Egyptian guy up there at the top uh, holding a scepter. Again, a king because he's holding a scepter. Okay, so on the next page is a royal staff, which by the way, this is all you've heard of a shepherd king. This is all symbolic of uh, shepherding because shepherds have uh, what, what became a king's scepter, um, the rod and the staff, they comfort me. With the rod, you protect your sheep. You smash in a you know, wolf's head if he comes for your sheep. And with your staff, you care for them. And so you see the shepherd here that I took a picture of with his staff, and I compare him to kings who are also holding their staffs, ancient kings. And uh, then you see this Persian king down at the corner with his staff between his feet. So, so what this is, is it's royal imagery. So when you go back to the prophecy then, the scepter will not depart from Judah means the king will not depart from Judah nor the ruler staff from between his feet until it comes to whom it belongs. And whoever this is that it belongs, when it comes to him, he will be king not just over Israel, but all the nations will be in obedience to his kingship. In other words, from Judah will come the king of the world. The divine king of the world. Now, um, if you look at page 60, let's look at that quote on the left. Genesis 49 says, Then Jacob gave them these instructions. I am about to be gathered to my people. Bury me with my fathers in the cave in the field of Ephron, the Hittite, <clears throat> the cave in the field of Machpelah, near Mamre in Canaan, which Abraham bought along with the field as a burial place from Ephron, the Hittite. Now, listen, here's who's buried here. There Abraham and his wife Sarah were buried. There Isaac and his wife Rebekah were buried. And there I buried Leah. Is Rachel buried here? No, because she was buried. Remember, she died during childbirth and was buried near Bethlehem. Now the, ver the last verse over here on page the right column in page 60 when Jacob had finished giving instructions to his sons, he drew his feet up into the bed, breathed his last, and was gathered to his people. So Jacob's sons did as he had commanded them. They carried him to the land of Canaan and buried him in the cave in the field of Machpelah near Mamre. It was important to the patriarchs where they were buried, so much so that they came in this you know, giant entourage all the way from Egypt all the way up here imagine them arriving with Jacob's body and uh, and burying him here where he had already buried Leah mm -hmm. so what do we have buried here we have here 
in this cave the bones of the lineage of the king of the world to come. Also the bones of the lineage of David, because the king of the world will be the son of David and continue his throne, house, and kingdom forever. And also the bones of the ancestry of Judah specifically in which whose territory we're standing in the midst of. Now, the ancient city is over there and surrounding it are a whole bunch of tombs. Remember all the tombs that what we saw when we were standing in the city of David? Mm -hmm. Well, there's a whole bunch of tombs like that all around caves and burial caves and tombs all around the city of Hebron. So how do we know which cave specifically all these scriptures are referring to? Yeah, how about the one with the giant, you know, 2,000 plus years built in the first century BC walls around it commemorating it? And would we find something older if we could excavate it like they found at Mamre when they excavated that? Yeah, certainly so. But what we can see is already evidence enough that this is one of the only three places that Herod the Great built up to honor and please uh, his Jewish subjects. Okay, so there's no reason whatsoever to think it's anywhere but inside those commemorative walls. And if you're standing in the middle of those, you've got to take the buildings out of it because there were no buildings there. You're standing in the middle of these commemorative walls. You're standing at the burial cave. If you're in Mamre, you're standing at, uh, at the um, altar that Abraham built. If you're standing in Jerusalem, you're standing on Mount Moriah where Abraham built an altar. Everything is intricately connected scripturally, theologically, and historically, and archaeologically, because it is what it is. Okay? I'm gonna come what? along with a new idea and say, oh, guess what? Uh, that's really not the cave of the patriarchs. This other cave over here is the cave of the patriarchs and then they'll come up with a way to convince people that the cave is really over there and not over here or maybe in another place that they say this is Hebron and this isn't Hebron. You see that's going on like crazy now because it sells books, it sells videos, it, it builds reputations. Um, older is better. When you have two when you have two ancient texts that conflict with each other which one is the general rule of thumb do you take? The, 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 the younger or the oldest? the oldest? And it's the same way with tradition. You go with the oldest tradition. <laughs> okay, so keep us here. So Marvin, keep us here. Okay, and here we go inside. Now entering into, we've just entered into the synagogue. We've just entered the synagogue.
said when we were at home. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. And this says Abraham. Okay, so now you're looking through and you're seeing that shield there in between. You're looking the opposite direction. Which one says one? Sorry, it says Leah. Oh, I thought Leah was doing something. That's what Joel said. Yeah. So which one's this? Jacob. Thank you. 